I'm not sure, guys, why we're why what's going on today. Can you hear me? Bueller, Bueller. It's just really sluggish, and I don't know why. It's sluggish, and I don't know why. <sighs> You can, can you hear me? Okay. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on, but it's real sluggish for me too. Hang on. My camera settings up. Just a minute. Starting over. Starting over people. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> waiting, waiting. I don't know. It might be time to get a new uh, camera. Hang on, guys. I'm trying to get my camera settings up. But you can hear me? Let's see. Yeah. it's I, I rebooted, Janet, just to make sure. But uh, hang on. Let me get my camera settings up. It's just really slow, and I don't know why. Let's see. Hang on, I'm trying to get my camera settings going here. Hang on, guys. It's going to be a minute to fix all this. And my camera settings are slow, too. Give it a minute. Give it a minute. You're back. You can hear... Um, I don't know what's going on, but it's really, it's really uh, uh, not buffering for me, but it's just real slow moving. And I'm trying to get my camera settings up. Hang on. <clears throat> just a minute, guys. We'll see what we can do. <clears throat> Let me get a sip of my coffee. <clears throat> I'm not sure what's going on. And it might just be YouTube, but because I was fine on everything else before I got on. So um, I don't know. But you can hear me. I'm trying to get my camera settings to come up, but <coughs> everything's just moving really slow for me. Is my hand herky jerky? Is it moving? Are we good? Does it seem like it's okay? Just a minute. Let's zoom in one. <laughs> Even my camera settings coming up is slow. Okay, well, we're going to try. We're going to try, guys. So if you're just joining us, <laughs> thanks for coming back. If you're just joining us, guys, um, I had to leave and come back. So everything I talked about what we're going to do today is um, <laughs> it's going to be gone from the first part to, into the second one. What I want to do, I want to do some jelly plating on, um, what do you call it, uh, deli paper and using that deli paper. In collages, for instance, like here's my abandoned book. Y'all let me know how the quality is. If it gets really bad, we'll just uh, do it another day. Or, you know, I'll do it later. Um, so anyway, these right here, this is pieces of the deli paper. Right there. Those are pieces of the deli paper cut up after I've used them. So it's not going to matter too much. Um what goes on other than some colors on the deli paper and uh because and again i showed my abandoned castle book i showed a couple pieces out of this let me go to where's that one we had let's see let's go to this one okay so like this we started out with this And then I turned it into this with with the abandoned, you know, world building with collage. 
So in this one, I even have a little piece of a stencil here. I'm lagged to myself. I'm not buffering, but I'm lagging to myself. So hopefully I'm not lagging to you guys. <laughs> hopefully, but we'll see how it goes. I don't know what's going on today. It could be YouTube. It could just be so many people using YouTube, you know. And then the other thing I showed was this book. And I'm not going to review it too much other than to say it was from 2004. It's 4,000 flower and plant motifs. The one out is 5,000 flower and plant motifs. Pecola had put a link in there earlier. I think the book is, I think it was 14 or $17. But, you know, it's back from 2004. And it's just got all kinds of plant and floral motifs, just like it says. So if I get, you know, stuck for some kind of designs or something to throw on top of the jelly plate, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to do stenciling today. I'm not going to use stencils in the jelly plating. I'm just going to do colors and then ink on top. We wouldn't know if I was lagged. That's true. And then the other thing I showed, because the first part's not going to be stay up, um, is the little napkin journal that I worked on last week. I did finish. I'm going to repeat some of these things here. Um, I did uh, finish... I did finish putting napkins on every page and started painting on some of them. So this is what that looks like. I painted this one out. And I haven't really done much else with it because, you know, it took a while to fit, fill all the pages. This is the one we did last week. Did that one last week. So you can just see different napkins that I put on here. We'll do uh, some scenes or whatever we feel like, you know. Uh, but I did finish putting something on every page. And this is just 110 weight cardstock cut down to eight and a half by 11. I mean, eight and a half by eight and a quarter. And this is some of my deli, pa um, deli papers there. And uh, cut down and folded in half. And then all the little painty dots and all that's Posca or uh, an acrylic paint pen. Okay. So you can see that I got something on every page. And so this is the size. Here come the cats. Um, this is the size. It's eight and a quarter by eight and a half and just cardstock folded in half. And then we did napkin journal. I just wanted to update you on that because I did finish putting napkins on every page. And the whole thing is just held together with a piece of elastic cording like that. Okay, so let's see here. Um, so hi, everybody coming back. Um, I, I'm coming back. Um, I don't know what happened. My sound went out. So I had to reboot and come back. And it's really, um, I'm lagging to you guys. So as long as you can't tell that it's laggy, it's not herky jerky to you guys, then, then we're good. Um, let's see. Um, well, a lot of people, Curly, and good morning, by the way, and Jerry, and anybody else that I miss saying hi to at the other <laughs> on the first uh, 30 minutes, I did a, a, you know, I was here 30 minutes about 20 minutes ago and uh, I lost my sound. So I had to leave and come back. So this is a totally different uh, recording now. So uh, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for everybody for coming back over to this recording or to this live. And uh, yeah, so I'm not going to repeat saying hi to everybody. I already said hi to. <laughs> we'll just get crack a lacking. Okay, so a jelly plate is just like it sounds. And I'm going to use my small one today. I have the law, I have an eight and a half by 11 or whatever size that is, eight by 10. This is a five by seven. And uh, so I'm going to put this away. And I should probably put down a piece of wax paper, but it's already pretty, the desk is already pretty messed up anyway. So, um, all right. So I'm using deli paper and we already talked about different kind of paper. So, um, all right. So I'm using deli paper and we already talked about different kind of papers you can use. A lot of people that do the jelly plating are very fancy and I've done it before too with Jean's help, uh, using stencils and, and wiping out 
and wiping in using stencils. I don't think I'm going to do stencils today because the point of this one is just to make some papers and show you some quick jelly plated um, not uh, deli papers. And I tear them up and cut them up like you saw in that sample I showed you. So I'm not going to do a lot of stenciling and stuff on them. I'm What I'm going to do is I'm going to ink designs on them because the only thing I'm going to do is tear them up. So it doesn't matter if I have a pretty floral stencil design on it because I'm going to tear them up. I'm going to show you how you can use the papers, not just make pretty papers, which there's plenty. Hi, Mary. There's plenty of videos out there on how to make beautiful jelly plated pen, um, papers. So I did pull out a lot of my metallics. I, I pulled out one of my drawers of the metallic. And I said, I need to use my metallics along with my regular deco uh, art Americana colors. So if Eileen was here, she could be telling me what color she liked. <laughs> all right. So all I'm going to do, guys, and, you, and I have a brayer. That's what you need, a brayer. So I'm going to just do a couple of colors here. Let's do something like here. Let's do this. I'm shaking them up off the side here. So this one is deep midnight blue. So I'm just going to put a little bit of deep midnight blue and maybe I'll just do a couple colors at first, maybe some gold. And this is just some old patio paint. These are, I got all different kinds. I got the deco art uh, dazzling metallics, I have some pat deco art patio paint, elegant. Uh, I just got all different kinds of metallics here. I just pulled them out. All right. So I'm going to put some gold and midnight blue. Okay. So hopefully green. Oh, there's Eileen. Okay, green, blue, and orange. Okay, we'll do that one. I'm trying to use metallics, though. I'm trying to use up my metallics, Eileen. So tell me two colors and a metallic. I have blue. I have teal. I have kind of a green, a dark, a teal. That's pretty. That metallic. And, of course, I have copper, gold, purple, silver, diff different shades of gold here. I have um, champagne gold. And I have regular, um, just bright gold. And then let's see, that's just black. And I have copper. So I have a lot of metallics here. So I'm trying to use a metallic. I'm trying to use a metallic with a color or two. Okay. So, and then of course you want a side paper here to roll off the excess. And, and again, I'm not really... The, I'll show you what I'm going to do when this is when we let this dry. If I have to hit it with the heat gun, so I'm just going to just pick up some paint colors like this. I might the next one I might do a little bit more paint because I'm fully covered. But what I'm going to do after this sits and dries for a minute, I'm going to ink. I'm going to ink some designs on it. Oh gosh, the lag for me is maddening. I usually don't have a a lag for myself. All right. I also have a couple other colors, like I pulled out, I do have a couple of golden colors, I have the golden, uh, green gold, and you know, some of those, and I have my, and here's a red, I also have all my Jane Davenport colors here, so I've got all kinds of paint. All right, so let me go ahead and use, let's put a little more something color on here just to use this up. And again, even the these papers over here can be used. Let's see, let's go ahead and put a little, mm, let's put a little copper on here. I just want to use a little bit of this up. Oh, I didn't shake that one up. You got to make sure and shake your, especially if you haven't used them in a long time. I haven't used these um, metallics in a long time. And you want to shake them up. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just going to get oils. Okay, so let's see. Let's put down another one. And again, what I'm going to do with these is ink designs on them. So I'm that's why I'm not using stencils. That's kind of a light champagne color on there. Uh, I think, let me go ahead and close my door because I don't want the cats coming in here and walking over these painted papers. Because I'm having to put them on the floor. And they'll come in here and walk on them. All right. So let's see. What did she say? All right. So uh, you said a green. Say them again, Eileen. Yeah. I'm going to try this teal, this metallic teal here. Okay. So what do you want with the metallic teal? Eileen, let me get a piece of. Uh... So the idea here is to make some of these for a little while. Then I'll dry them. 
then I'm going to ink some designs on them, and then we're going to use them in a collage. Okay, so we got uh, <laughs> the chat's moving faster than your brain. Green, blue, and gold. Okay, well, I got the kind of a teal color on here. And again, I'm going to move these, get me a fresh one of these. Just keep moving here. Keep moving. Keep the little assembly line. Let's let's zoom in one. Let me get my camera to work. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, there we go. That's a little better. Oh, let me check on the uh, lighting situation. Okay, that's good. All right, we're good. Um, all right, well, I already put this teal. What else did she say? Gold. Okay, let's put gold on this. Um, let's get um let's get this one. This is a nice, I love this bright one. Oh, but I got this one too. Emperor's gold. Let's go with Emperor's gold. I'm making sure it's shake, shake it up real well. So I'm just putting some colors down, rolling them out. Again, um, you can put stencils on this. If you've not seen the girls do that with the stencils, you need to go and look at that because it's very cool. <clears throat> but I'm just trying to get some painty papers to um, ink on. We're going to ink on these. Uh-oh. Well, let's see. Let's go ahead and do down there now that I touch it down there. Okay. And I like the deli paper because it's so thin. All right, and there's enough on there for another one. So let's go ahead and I got I trust I got a whole box here. How many are in here? I mean, I've used quite a few, but there's like a thousand. <laughs> so yeah, let's go ahead and use up another. Let's use up that. Then it just soaks it right up. Do you pop out the chat to minimize the YouTube page? Why? Why would I want to do that, Ian? I can see it. It's just it's just lagging, and I'm not sure why. Okay, so there we go. I don't think popping out the chat's going to make a difference. All right, so there we go on that. We'll see, guys. It's a, it's an iffy day today. <clears throat> it's a little iffy today. All right, let me clean this brayer off a little, and now I've got this one to write on too. All right, now let's see. All right, let's get rid of this excess color. All right, so she said green, blue, and gold, didn't she? All right, so let's see. Let's go with uh, some colors here so you don't see the lag. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's okay. I just won't look. I just <laughs> I won't look at it. I'll just try not to look at it. I'll just look at chat. Chat's, <clears throat> chat's not lagging. My video to me is lagging. Okay, so and that's way too much. I didn't need that much. Okay, so green, um, what color blue do you want, Eileen? I'm letting Eileen pick. Hi, Mary. Anybody else I missed? Um, anybody else? Remember, I'm trying to use up some metallic. So she said green, something else, and gold. So let's put uh, let's put some that green, a little bit of gold. And what other color? <laughs> You do this kind of crafting when I'm low on mojo. Yeah, it's real fun to do. But we're going to use these papers. Okay, I want to use these papers. Eileen's not tall. There she is. I have such a shiny personality. I never use a towel. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go with the green. And uh, I know she doesn't want me to use pink. Um, uh, let's see. How about uh, how about uh, a different shade of blue? Let's go with uh, just a true blue, maybe. Just a true blue. <laughs> I'm shaking them up. Hi, Rain. Hi, Muffy. Anybody else I miss? Thanks, guys, for coming back over here after um, this one's kind of clogged, I think. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming back over here after um, we lost sound on round one. So we're on round two. Let me get some more baby wipes. <laughs> Eileen. <laughs> All right, so I'll get at least two sheets out of this. And plus, I need one over here to clean off the brayer. Again, I'm I'm not making these fancy with um with uh what do you call it? Um not making them fancy with stencils because I'm gonna tear these up. Okay, I just want the colors. I just want the colors because we're gonna ink on them. 
we're going to ink on them. What are, Janet, what are you and Eileen going to do today? <laughs> All right, so see. And if you think you need more, then just put it back down on a spot and just kind of pick up some more color. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> And they're all going to pile up around my feet. I'll make about 20 of them. Let's just kind of smooth that out. Maybe add a little bit, just a drop more blue. Um, we'll make about 20. Because, I again, the idea was it's not going to be a jelly plating day. Uh, that's not my point to do that today. It's to use the papers. It's to use the papers. That's what the plan is as long as we stay connected and everything. Eileen needs to tell me soon before I draw something to paint. <laughs> okay, so you see how pretty, the, just the colors themselves and just mixing whatever colors you like. Although I know Eileen doesn't want to hear it, but I do want to use, and I'm going to put this one to the side and get another, because they're all going to work. Okay, so let's see. Let's try, um, oh, what about this red copper? Let's go with, I'm going to wipe some of this off here. Let's go with a little of this shiny copper. And let me see what other colors do I want. Maybe a, um, let's go with the yellow ochre. So Eileen's, Eileen's not telling me there. And maybe a sienna. We'll do a brown one, kind of a brown color one. I think Janet should do jelly plating. <laughs> she may want to. I don't know. It's, it is kind of messy to do. And, and again, I'm not doing a jelly plating day. I want to do collage papers to use. Okay, so this is nice and thick. A little too thick, I think. So we'll wipe some off because then we'll use this. So let me put this one to the side. Again, I had to close the door because the cats would be walking on this. So we'll get a couple out of this one. See? And I know the light's bright, so. Oops. All right, hang on, guys. I'm trying to find places on the floor. All right, let's wipe, let me smooth that out. Let's do one more on here. <clears throat> you like those colors? Okay. Everybody has their favorite color combination. But again, I'm going to tear all these up. But we're going to ink on them. For, you'll see. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Let's do, let's do uh, maybe two more combos. Um, let's see. Let's maybe do a red. Let me wipe this down. Let's do maybe red and silver. Ooh, red and silver sounds good. Does red and silver sound good to you? Okay, red and silver. Shaking over here to the side. All right, let's see. Is this silver? No, that's white. Do I have a silver? Oh, hmm. Let me look in my... Oh, here we go. Let me shake it up. Okay, there's red and silver. Hi, Flo. Anybody else says hi? Did I say hi to you, Mary? Hi, Mary. Mary does jelly plating, too. Everybody does jelly plating. But again, I'm not making this fancy. I'm not using stencils today. It's not a jelly plating day. It's a collage using collage paper day. <laughs> but I have to make the papers to show y'all how I do that. Okay, so here, let's go ahead and... Um, we have done, uh, with Jean's help, uh, many layered type of papers. We've done many layered with, with um, you know, like you see jelly plating girls do with uh, the stencils and all. We've done that before. It's been a while. Okay, so there's red and silver. But wait till we get to the black. Wait till we get to the black. Okay, so let's see. There's uh, That kind of looks like a nice, just leave it like that. Pick up the rest of that one. 
Put in caps if you're talking to me, guys. I'm just hoping we're going to stay connected and everything stays good today. Because I did have to restart this show. All right. Let's see. Um, let's see. What other, what other, what, blah, 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 what else can we do with red? Red and copper, maybe? Let's put some red and, well, let's do red and yellow ochre and copper. Yellow, just a little bit. I'm putting more, a lot of paint. Now I can get a couple of pulls off of it. And copper. Did I say copper? No, gold. No, copper? Yeah, let's do copper. Let's do this dark copper. All right, so let's see what we got here. Again, I'm just kind of getting the colors all over the jelly plate. Roll off the... Uh-oh. Roll off the excess. Let's get another paper here because that will be good for. I can't move my chair too much because I'm running out of room behind me. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm running out of room behind myself. Okay. All right. We'll do. Let, let me ask Eileen for two more color combinations. Purple and gold. Annette said purple and gold. Purple and gold would be good. I also have a shiny purple. We'll do a shiny purple. Okay. All right. So, again, we're not done with these papers yet. This is just the first stage. I will have to probably dry them. I think I can get one more off of here. Okay. Here we go. All right, let's move that to the, I'm having running out of room here on the floor. All right, let's clean this. Let's move this one to the side. They're under my feet. They're all around my chair. <laughs> we'll do we'll do purple and gold and then we'll move on. How have I never jelly plated before? Oh, if you think this is cool, try it with stencils. Should I use do one with stencils? Not um, oh, we'll see. Just to show you, <laughs> okay. Let's use the purple metallic, um, and then gold. Okay, let's get another in here. Oh yes, with stencils you can do all kinds of cool things. Okay, now I've got a lot of excess on the brayer, so I'm just going to roll that off because then I can use this piece as a base of something as well. It needs a little darker purple. Maybe I need to, let's see, let's just put a little dark purple in there. Let's kind of roll that in. Tap, 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 tap. Okay, let's see what we get here. All right. Mm, let's see who else am I missing brown and blue for Janet okay brown and blue for Janet okay look so there's a purple and gold there's enough on here for one more okay now I'm going to move these to the floor if I have a space let's see here over there all right let's clean these off let's do a uh Brown, what it was it? Blue and brown? A blue and brown for Janet. Okay. All right, let's move this off. All right. Okay, let's see. A blue. Let's do um a nice uh let's let's do one of these let's do Jane's blue here. This is like her midnight blue. Let's just put a, a little bit of Jane blue out there. And brown. Let's see. How about copper? Will that and copper be good? And then maybe even let's try it. Let's do a, a Indian yellow hue. Drop of that. Let's just put it. Whoa, oh, 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 that's way more than a drop. Okay, let me clean off the sprayer. All right, let's see. This may not be blue enough. I need to add a little more blue. We'll do a couple pulls here with this. We'll put some more blue in it. Okay. I'm just slamming through this, guys, because I want to get to the next stage. All right. Okay, now let's add <clears throat> a 
let's add a little bit more of the blue to this. Do a little swirl action there. We'll do a little, sw little swirly bits. <laughs> All right. There we go. Are you wanting a jelly plate now, Janet? Hi, kangaroo babe. Can you do teal, white, and black? Well, no, I'm not doing black because we're going to do black with the ink. I already did teal and gold. All right, let's use the rest of this up. And I love this one. Look, that one looks good too. All right, let's add, a, let's just add a little bit more um, midnight blue here. I'll use this one. Just do one more here. Again, I was trying to use up a lot of my metallics. And of course, I'm just using a very minimal right maybe a little um here i got this pearl sil uh pearl white pearl let's try that let's just see what happens what do you think prisma how's that looking All right. let's give that one a shot the white might be cool when i go to tear it up look see that's white pearl Let's see, seeing shiny things reminds me of the platypus creature from the Fantastic Beast, and we were, and where to find them in a shiny thing. <laughs> okay. All right, let's see. Let's get one more off of this. Let's do one more of that color, a little bit of the midnight blue, a little bit of the pearl, a little bit of the pearl. Let's get a fresh one of these. Okay, so now I've got probably... I don't know, 20, 25 sheets down on the floor. That's plenty for our project. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some of this down. Don't y'all like the sound of that? <laughs> okay. And see, it does kind of come through if it's real thick. All right. All right, so that's plenty. Now, let's go ahead and clean this up a little. We'll still use this. Let me just kind of wipe this down just a little. Okay, let's wipe down the jelly plate. I have to get another baby wipe, I think. I don't really clean, clean them, but I do wipe off the excess. But, you know, the crusty bits can always be nice on a jelly plate, too. Make sure you get around the edges. All right, now let's get... Um, Where's the box? I'm going to put the box. I'm going to put this away. And again, this is the 5 by 7 I have the 8 by 10 or whatever size that is, too. I just thought we're just going to do some small ones. So there we go. Jelly Arts, Jelly uh, Printing Plate. And they come in different sizes. I think there's a 12 by 12 No, the wax, it's not really wax, Mary. Um, I can't say no, but it's not like wax paper. Mm, but it's not shiny. I don't know, Mary. Do you not have Mary? Do you not have any deli paper, Mary? Mary, this is coming to you. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can fold this up here. <clears throat> All right. All right, Mary, I'm going to send you some of this. And I don't even know. I've got two or three different brands. This is Interfolded Bakery, Bag Craft, Paper, Con, Packaging, Dynamics. But I think it's all pretty much the same. So I'll send you a little stack, Mary. <laughs> I'll set that over there. Okay, let's move the jelly plate. Let me get some um, baby wipes. No, let me just go wash my hands, guys. Hang on. Let me just go wash my hands. Okay. 
Okay. All right, I'm rolling over my papers here. So now, let me, um, I'm going to move all the metallics off of here. I have a drawer for my metallics because they don't fit on my, they don't fit in my build here. So let's see, that's metallic, not this, metallic, metallic. Let me get all the metallics separated and pick those up. Okay. These other paints I can just shove back here until I put those away. Let's move the big thing up. Um, um, yeah, I don't think you can buy this. I mean, I've never seen this on Walmart. Mary or any place like that. I've, I've had it. You have to order it. I think I've never seen it there. Maybe it's there, but I think you have to order online. I also had this. I didn't use this big Americana. I got this on clearance from uh, Michael. I don't remember, but anyway, it was regularly nine ninety nine, and I got this jar for two dollars and fifty cents. So it's it's the Americana, you know, same acrylic paint. All right, so let's put that away. All right, I, I'm trying not to look at my screen because my screen is lagging. The chat's not lagging, but the screen is lagging. All right, so now what I'm going to do, oh, here's another silver. Let's put that away. Let's put my, trying to get everything put away here so we have the next step. Uh, Dee, it is greaseproof silicone paper. That's what bakery, it's like, you know, when you buy a cookie at the bakery and they pull out a piece of deli paper, that's what this is. So you could probably get it at, well, Dunkin' Donuts or something, Mary. Ask them when you go in and buy a donut. Say, can I have a couple extra sheets of that paper? But I'm going to send you that, what I pulled for you, Mary. I'm going to send you that. All right, so now I'm going to get my heat gun real quick, guys. And I'm just going to, it shouldn't take but a second. But I want to dry these just a little so I can stack them. Okay, I just want to, I want to dry them another, a little bit so I can stack them. These are the some of the extra, you know, the rub-offs, the brayer-offs. Oh, this one was my sample one. Okay, let me get a couple here around my feet. Let's do, let me get a few just so I can start working on them while they're drying on the floor. Let me get a few that I think are going to look really cool with black. That, need a red one. Yeah. Oh, great. The wind is coming in my, oh no, the wind is starting to pick up and come in my room, picking my, uh, <laughs> pick my papers up. If you hear the door jiggling, it's because the, the wind is moving. I have the door closed so the cats don't come in here. All right, let me dry these four. But, yeah, if y'all want to look for deli paper, go to wherever they sell, you know, donuts and cookies and stuff and just ask them for a couple extra sheets and test it out on your jelly plate before you go out and buy a 1,000 sheets. to be a hundred percent dry I just want to not be running my arm through so there's lots of things you can do with stencils with them if you want designs but I'm I'm making these to tear up so, okay, so now what I want to do is let me get out some ink. And this is just Kohenor, um waterproof black drawing ink. It's what I use like when I do Inktober inking or anything. I've got, you can, I've got bottles and bottles of different types of ink. I've just pulled this one. Okay, so then I want to get some kind of a, kind of a, floppy type brush let's see let me look over here so i'm not too big but okay just something you know no, nothing fancy here all right so what i want to do now and you can do different things you can do here's the thing it's going to get torn up so you can do some swirls and you can do them thick and thin again this is all going to get torn up 
So, uh, and that's why I got that floral book out. If I run out of, you know, just some regular old shapes, then um, I can just look in the book and get some ideas. Okay, so there's one there. You can do like that's kind of squares. You could do circles. And if you don't know CC Creations, is it, is it CC Creations or Creations by CC? She does all these cool shapes in watercolor. Um, if if Picola or somebody wants to put in the link to CC's Creations, if you want some design ideas, patterns, doodle designs, if you want some of those, go to CC Creations. I think that's what it is. I get it backwards sometimes. Creations by CC or CC Creations. And she does these amazing watercolors. And then she does all these patterns in them. And uh, so you can, you know, you can do lines. You can do just whatever. Again, I'm going to tear this up. So I'm not being too particular. Right? <laughs> creations CC. Is that what it is? Yeah, CC is awesome. If you want some awesome, you love water. Well, even if you don't like watercolor, I don't do a lot of watercolor, but I'm just saying um, just some swirls here. Uh, if you uh, want patterns, it's just so, you know, we can get all kinds of ideas from different people. It doesn't have to, you don't have to, like, I'm not doing anything with watercolor. But, you know, I'm, I'm using her pattern idea. And I'm, these aren't necessarily her patterns. Trust me. She's got some awesome patterns. I'm just throwing some out there. And that's why I showed you uh, the clip art book. This, this one is like the roll off, the leftover. So let's do um, let's maybe some more circles. These can be interconnected. Again, guys, you'll see what I'm talking about when I tear this up. I just want I just want some different shapes and things on there. Okay, so there's and you can uh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Her doodles, Nancy. Yeah, her doodles. Uh let's see what else do we have here. Let's go with this one. This one I already had. This was a rub off. Um, let's just do some lines through it. What else do we have? This one already has quite a bit of black on it. This already had black ink on it, leftover. I used it as a leftover. Okay, what else? Let me see what other color. Uh, purple. I didn't do a purple one. Let's get the purple one. Ah, oh, here we go. Let's do these two. I might have to dry them. We'll see. They're still pretty wet. Okay, so I'm going to stop a second with this and let's dry. we got to dry these. I hope I'm not going to blow them all over the table. Let's try to... Hang on, guys. I'm not really looking at chat. And I'll pull out a couple of like my one of my abandoned books and an art journal. I'll pull out a couple different books. Let me go ahead and try to dry some of the ink. But if you want to see some fancy jelly plating, you know, there's a lot of girls out there using the stencils, using the stencils and making beautiful jelly plated papers. trying to dry multiples here they have to really be dry before you start tearing them up so let's see if i can get them nice and dry here move them off the table hopefully my I'm not lagging to you guys like I'm lagging to myself. Okay, so let's do these two here with the black. All right, let's see. Um, Guys, I'm not looking at chat. 
and then maybe do another kind of a, a little littler circles or something on this one. <clears throat> and again, this is waterproof ink. And acrylic paint, of course, is waterproof too. All right, let's dry these. All right, let me let me uh, rinse my brush out. All right, let me check chat and we'll dry these. Let me move this ink out of the way. All right, let's see. Make sure it's not a, what. Make sure what's not a speedball brand. The ink? Are you talking about uh, Devin? Yeah, these not speedball. That the speedball ink made for uh, mono printing on is thicker. It's thicker. Yeah, I don't know why you couldn't use it. You could use it as a base. You could rub it down and and scratch out designs. <laughs> oh, trust me. There's plenty of girls doing jelly plating. We used to do it years ago. Jean would direct the layering process. And y'all keep a Jean's town, Jean's town up in the Nova Scotia area in your thoughts and prayers. All right. Everybody keep everybody in everybody's prayers these days, right? I really want these dry before I start tearing them up. So, I'm just going back and forth trying to. Oh, jelly plate brands. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I know I'm missing some of the chat. Yeah, I haven't. I don't know about that brand of uh, jelly plating. I've only used the jelly plate brand. I know people have made them before, and but I mean, I think this one. I think the the small five by seven at Michaels, less than fifteen, and then you can use a coupon. They have those five by seven. I don't know if they have the big ones because I didn't get the big one at Michael's. I don't remember. But the five by seven one at Michael's is, I think, normally the $12 or $15. And if you use a 40 or 50% off coupon, you can get one at Michael's for six bucks. So, you know, it's, it's, it's I, I wouldn't go to all the tr trouble to make one if you could get one for six dollars. All right, I still need to dry this just a little. I can see the shiny bits of the ink. You really want it dry. The other thing I can do to kind of speed this up is just to take a uh, take a piece of paper and just kind of sop up any any loose, you know, any ink that might still be wet and try to get so, see try to get some of it up so I'm not you really want to make sure it's dry before you start tearing it up. That one's pretty good. This one still has a piece of uh, paint gold paint and the metallics the metallics can sometimes take a leather a little bit longer to dry too okay i think we're good all right we're gonna use these i didn't i didn't paint all the other ones i mean ink all the other ones but we got these so this is a start all right y'all still with the tour uh thank you flo Thanks, guys, for coming back after the first round didn't take. <laughs> All right. So now what I want to do is, oh, this is still a little wet there. Let's kind of see if I can. Um, what I want to do is I want to, let me get that sample again out of my abandoned here. Out of one of my abandoned books. So you can see where I've used torn pieces of deli paper in my scenery okay <clears throat> all right so i've also did i use it in this little one let me see i think i've used some in this little one uh, i should have marked it but i didn't didn't think about it in this journal 
I think it's toward the front, I think. Let's start toward the front. I've used some um, of the pa tissue paper. I mean, the deli paper. Let's see. This would be a good one to use some on. Maybe I'll hold this page out for that red one. I know I got some in here somewhere. Uh, not sure. We'll use this book too. I'll use this book as, I know there's some in here somewhere. I'll probably come across it as we're looking. All right. So uh, let's just say we start with this one. Um, and then you can kind of coordinate your colors. You can do it at any stage. You can do it before you get too far into the process. You can do it later, before. Let's just look at what I kind of want. Do I want kind of like this one, maybe a little red? I don't know. We'll see. So what I usually do when I want to use these papers, the circle on the page one up. Oh, gosh. I don't, the, I don't know. <laughs> Janet, we have a lag, so I have no idea how where you are talking, you know. Um, I know I have it as a as a divider, as a scene divider, you know, a um, landscape division, but I don't remember where. And it may not even be in this book. It may be in another one. Okay, so now what I do is I just tear. First off, I usually tear off the edges. And you can still use some of this if you want. Like maybe that little bit might be good. And you could just spend some time just tearing things out. You could cut it too. You could cut it if you want. I like torn edges. Um, and you could just sit and tear your papers up. You know, if you have 50 of them made or something, just sit there and tear, you know, tear your papers up or cut them, whatever you want to do. Okay. I just like the feel of tearing paper. Uh, let's see. Who else am I missing? Anybody else popping in? Artful Dabbler, Annette, anybody else I missed? Thanks, guys, for being here. All right, so now, and you can cut them in different ways. So for instance, you can cut strips, and you can cut thinner strips. You just got to kind of be a little more, you know, careful so you don't just rip it off to the side. But you can make thinner ones. So let's do a few. Let's just do a few like this. See, this is why I said I didn't want to go to all the trouble of doing a lot of um, stenciling because you're not going to see any stencil designs. I mean... If you can't just think of some designs, then use stencils. But you could do either one. But I didn't want to get out stencils and make a big stencil mess when I knew this is where I was headed. This is where <laughs> this is where I was headed. Okay, so let's just show you that so you can see. Okay, so we got these strips. You can do you just kind of go slow. Then you have more control over the direction of the tear. You could do uh, like squares, you know. It's all for using in your collaging, in your art journaling, or your um, in your abandoned books. So you can see here. So I got those little squares. Hi, fly, uh, um, Daniel, fly, 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 fox, pro. <laughs> Thanks for stopping in. We're just uh, making our collage papers out of deli paper on a jelly plate. Okay, so now I've got these. All right, so let's just stop for a second and let's just kind of come over here to this journal. And I could do something down in here. I'm just going to kind of lay it. Then I can just tear it here like this. And I use matte medium. You could use glue stick if you want. I like matte medium because you're going to cover the top and the underneath. Now, let me tell you, when you do this with matte medium, you want to make sure that the ink is dry. Make sure everything's dry because you're going to go over. If, if you even have a little tiny wet spot on here and you start putting down um, matte medium over it, you're going to smear. You're going to smear that ink. So you could do this. I'm just going to kind of play around with some. You can make it a uh, smaller pieces and kind of go like this. Yeah. 
I just want to kind of show you. And this, this, these colors may not be the best for here. I'm just kind of trying to give it a little iridescent, watery type look because of the fish. You know, um, maybe a darker blue might have been better. I'm just, I'm just going with what we made this morning. You know, just whatever we made this morning. Okay, so maybe a little piece over there. You know, just so you can kind of see. Let me hold it up. If I can hold it up without them all flying away. See? It just gives you some texture, some background. Then after you glue that on, you can go back in there with paint or ink and doodles. You can go back in there with your um, uh, acrylic paint markers or your Posca paint markers. Okay, so there's that. I'm just going to do a couple different options. Um, here's the red ones. And again, there's still some of them are still wet. So you can do, you can tear some of these up. I'm just like I said, I'm just showing you some different options here to make uh, to use your papers in your journals. You don't always have to use magazine images. You can use your own papers, right? Just so you can kind of see some of the options. Let's do a little piece down in here. And I'd be more neat and more particular about how they laid out. But just so you can see how you can make, um, just so you can see how you can use your, use your own um, handmade papers, right? And so it's just whatever kind of designs you have on them. All right, and then you can just, you know, you can keep them piled up and you can have them all mixed up the colors and then just pull from them, whatever you want. But if you're looking for a specific color, color theme, then you can just pick like a whole sheet where you've uh, made your jelly plate and just tear that up and use that particular one. But what I usually do is, uh, you know, just tear them up and I have a bunch of them. But. Okay, so there's that. Let's just go. Do I, do I pick anything green? Let's do it here. All right, so here we go. This one has green, gold, and blue. It's not exactly the green I would use on this, but just so you can see. Any questions or anything, guys? Again, these are jelly plated deli papers jelly plated deli papers and you can cut them in strips you can use them here you can use them here here okay let's see and then after you do this then you go back in with paint maybe i should do one here maybe i should do one uh glue some down and then go back in and paint hi kenny Okay, so there's a green one. Let's just tear these up a little here. And you could use a full sheet. I mean, you could start with a blank page and glue something like this down if you wanted. And then, and then put your collage on top. I don't have any blank pages in here, I don't think. Let's just say this is, you know, let's just say. Um, you could glue this down right on a page and then go in here and put your collage elements on top of this instead of starting with, you know, paint or whatever. You could start with uh, a piece of your deli paper. Say jelly plated deli paper three times really fast. I know, right, Debbie? <laughs> uh, so anyway, you could start with that and then put uh, other elements, you know, stickers or cutouts or draw your own like here. This one right here, I drew him. I painted him, you know, myself, my little um, lemur. You know, I love me some lemurs and sloths. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, you could do that in a little, you know, in your little journal. Of course, I have my, uh, you know, different. Um, this is not, this is just, it's real rough right now. It's real rough. You can see it's just very scratchy, um, palette knifey. But like, let's just say, let's go with this page here. Oh, let me look down here on the floor. 
it is this one. I'm looking to see if this uh what color kind of like this copper one here with the blue. Okay, so let's just just tearing off the excess. Okay, so like here, again, I could do another layer of, of scenery. <clears throat> or it could go all the way across. It's very thin, you know. And just play with it. Like I have some mountain ranges up here. This could be even thinner. And you could do um, more landscaping with it. Like make your own, like build your world with the landscape layers. You know, you can go across like this to start. And it just gives your, it just gives you more, um, more, <laughs> you know. Let me get my abandoned book here. Let's see. There's abandoned castles. Which one am I looking for? <clears throat> so you can do the same thing in your books like this. You can take and, and divide out different layers, different layers uh, with your papers, like this one. I'll just take a big piece just so you can kind of see. Know what I mean, Vern? I'm not sure what book my tigers are in. I think I don't know if it's in this book. I don't think it's in this one. I'm trying to remember what book my tigers are in. I'm not sure. Well, we'll look and see. So you can use your papers. To divide things up or just, you know, I'm, I'm just going back to some of these here so you can kind of see how, you, how they can be used. Yeah. Okay. Of course, this one's done except it's not varnished yet, but just so you can kind of see. Um, let's get another color here. Let's get this some of these teely bright ones here. But you can just do so much with your own papers. And again, I haven't torn this one down yet. And it's just, you saw how easy it was. <clears throat> I'm just going to flip through and just get some, you know, rough ideas here. Uh, I think I have one of these torn some copper you could go see all this wood there now of course i would do this part first okay i do this part first and then do the painting up over it but just so you can kind of get an idea of what you can do and what it looks like so if you've made tons of jelly printed papers and you go, I don't know what to do with them. If you like to do art journaling and collage, then you can use them like this. Okay. There's, you know, just so you can kind of see how it looks kind of cool, right? Your papers. Let's see what else. Again, this one I use some kind of papers down here. Some kind of papers are down in there, but I'm just going to put something here just so you can kind of get the idea, right? Just so you can kind of get the idea here of how the papers look on the page. I 
I got some paint down here on the edge. Because you've got to be careful when you do your pages that you don't glue them shut with other papers. Here's some here. So you can see I've already started dividing this one out. There's a little crack in the road here. What I'll probably do with this is I'll probably open up that as a like a fissure. Let me use this. Let me hang on. I got some ink left here. this the crack in the road maybe I'll make it wider down here and then what I'll do is we'll dry that and then make this a little Of course, you can always add other colors and nebulization, which, you know, I do that with pencil. Do something like this. <clears throat> so, yeah, let's try that, though, before we move on. Same thing on this side. See, this side will have all stars over here. We'll have all this be stars and everything over in here. I'm just not taking the time to do the whole page right now, but that would be over here. Yeah, this is a Posca. You can have a shooting star over here. Yeah. And I know I would normally just fling paint, you know, with my bucket of stars, but I'm just kind of doing it just so you can kind of see. And then on some of these layers here where I put down the paper, then I can take and go in here with colors. Let's see. Let me just get something here to put this on here. And I can start, you know, Building something out of this. And just keep going. There's all this little crumbly bits of concrete from the photograph. Again, I'm just doing this real quick just to give you some, you know, inspiration. Give you some inspiration. And just keep on keeping on. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let me dry this. We're going to go into the castle book in a minute. You've got to make sure this is dry. This is how you glue your pages together. Is when your paint or ink or whatever is not dry... And you close the book, and you go back to it the next time, and the pages are stuck together. Okay, so you really want to make sure everything's dry. 
So let's see what else we got here real quick. See, this would be another good one for a nice uh, line of division. Even right here, like we could take doesn't have to be straight across. Like, look at that wood thing or whatever that's floating in that river. Let's just take tear this down a bit. <clears throat> and of course, I'd paint this out too. This would all get painted out. This would probably be the red here, the pink, the blue. I would match those colors, match those colors up. You all want to see me match some colors up? And then we could go this way, you know. You might not be able to see these little things of wood here in the, in the grant, on the page. But you can do something like this, you know, and it can cut across your page like this. It doesn't have to be the, just on the horizon line. You can do it like this, right? Okay. Can you see how that's already world building just with that? I mean, I can see it. I don't know. <laughs> you know. Something like that. And you can do, like, when I, let me go ahead and do, I'll do one here before I go to the castle book. I'm trying to give you all inspiration and ideas today, not necessarily. A lot of times I get carried away and I start working on a page and we don't leave the page. Two or three hours later, we're still on that page. <laughs> okay, so, oh, and I still didn't flip through the rest of this book, too. I'm still working in this one. Let me just kind of flip through this. Real quick, it's real crunchy so far. I haven't world built it. Oh, and by the way, I did punch a hole in every one of these because I needed some. I needed some planets, so um, some of these looked really good. And I, so I, I said, well, I punched one. I might as well punch on every page. So I punched a hole out of every page. But it's kind of cool to look through and see the layer underneath. Right now, these have not been world builded yet. They're just backgrounds that I will go in. I'll go in and like maybe this is a building here. Like maybe that could be a building there. A couple of buildings, you know. Um, <clears throat> it's just got the scrape paint and some collage done on it. But I haven't gone in and done anything else to them yet except punch holes. <laughs> oh, I do have one done in here. Uh, I, I didn't punch a hole in it because I'd already uh, finished it. This one. So this one's done. So this is collage right here. And this is collage right here. Everything else is paint. Everything else is painted in. Except those flowers in the distance. You like the holes in the pages? Yeah. Because <laughs> it looks cool when you go look to the other side, right? So this one doesn't have a hole in it. But everything here is paint except the flowers. So you can, whatever you don't want here, like, you know, like, let's say I want this, um, this to be a focal point, you know, I mean, I can go in here with pieces of paper and or paint, you know, and, and make my, um, make my uh, landscape, right? Start building a landscape with it. You have trees over here. I'm just picking up little slivers here. You have some trees over here. You can do all kinds of things with your little painting. And depending on the color, right, is I'm using it. I'm going, I'm picking these up by the color. So, yeah. So this one's real colorful. It's got a lot of colors in it. And then at the same time, this one has got all whitewash pages. So this one I'm working in has all whitewash pages. The other one has like real colorful this one has, oh, what happened there? Did I go dark? Did the, let's see here, I'm not sure. Mm, there it goes. I thought my lighting kind of flickered for a minute. Okay, so these are all whitewash pages. So what I've done on this is I've collaged and then whited out with just white acrylic paint, 
white it out. And now I can go back in here and add colors or whatever else I want to do. And, you know, but I have them ready to go. I have them ready to play with. This one's not been whitewashed yet. This is kind of what it looks like before I whitewash it. So do y'all want to see me do one of those? These haven't been whitewashed back here. This is how they start out. Look, so let's show you. They go from this. They go from like this to this in this book. I just have different things I do in different books. You know, that's that's why you see. Oh, my God. It's like, that's why you see me have, whoops, have so many traveler's notebooks and inserts and uh, individual all right, now if I can get these back up on the shelf without pulling the shelf down on myself. <clears throat> so let's do a couple different things with some paint. Again, I'm trying to inspire you guys with some of the different things. Oh, I was going to blend this one too. All right, let's do two different things here. So on this one, let's go ahead and get some white paint. I'm sliding up on my jelly plated things. Hang on. They're all under my feet. All right, let's see. Let's get some white paint. I'm new at this. What kind of books do you start with? No, you don't have to be an artist to do any kind of art journaling. And, and the, as far as the books go, it depends. For me, the deciding factor if I was going to pick a book, is what shape do you like? Do you like the Traveler's Notebook size? These are a Traveler's Notebook insert. Do you like that size? Do you like square size? And again, all my journals, look, they have something on every page, but they're all in flux. They're all in progress. I like having lots of journals working at the same time, right? And so you could have square journals. You could have um, your standard eight and a half by 11 uh, journals like the um, Ranger, uh, the, what's it called? The Dina, Dina, uh, these. Um, now I've, I've faux leathered mine, but they're like a craft color. You know, there's this size, there's big, you know, it depends on the size. I would just, I would pick by the size. If you want to do collage, if you want to start collaging and you don't know where to start, a, a book that has images already in it, like I have all these abandoned books, I have abandoned castles, abandoned places, abandoned, uh, what else over there? Sacred places, abandoned civilizations. Um, you know, all that. Um, if you don't know where to start with collage and you want to do collage, then you can start with a book where you can alter it. Okay. So that's what the, this book is. I've altered, let me find another finish page. I've altered it from, um, let me get, hang on, let me get my other one here. to show you like what they look like before, if I can find one. I've got them tabbed so you can see. Okay, so this is what this page started out as. Okay, I started with this. This is my duplicate copies. And then I turned it into this with paint and collage. Now, are you gonna be able to pick this book up and the very first time you try it, the very first time you try collage, do this? No. I can almost guarantee you, but I've done hundreds of them. And that's how, you know, let me go back to that other one I showed you. Okay. So this one started out like this. And what I'm doing is these are abandoned worlds. And uh, Kieran Connolly, who's the uh, author of this and, and a few of the other ones I have, um, he likes it that I alter his books. I even sent him an original out of one of the books to his publisher in uh, he, he and his publisher in UK. Um, 
but I'm taking those abandoned worlds and remaking them into something, right? Let's see what else. So let me find another finished one here. And see how I paint out all the sides? Let's see. I've got a couple of favorites in here. I'll go the other way, I think. I always try to show a couple of my favorites. And then I'll show you some blending, paint blending. Okay, I really like this one, too. Let's find that one. Okay, so this is what this one started as. And then turned it into this. Oh. This one's one of the most dramatic ones. Let me show you the before. So here's what this I started with. And it just looks so desolate because they're abandoned places, right? It looks so desolate and so nobody around, kind of like what we are now. Okay, so here, let's let's get some positivity here. So here's us, social distancing. <laughs> There's our social distancing, but the best is yet to come. Look, so we built this world. There he is right there. There he is. <laughs> but I bet there's a lot of people in there he's going to go visit. <laughs> so we may start like this, but we're going to roll on to this, okay? <laughs> you like that, Artful? <laughs> All his friends are in there. He's going to meet his friends. <laughs> okay, let's see what else do I have here that I can show you. A couple others. Because I've shown these all the time. If you guys, if you want to see more of these, go look at, just go look in my... Um, Go look in my uh, playlist, and I've got tons in my playlist. This one, I don't know where that, uh, I don't know where that, uh, let's see what else here. Okay, let me show you this one. This is one of my favorites, too. Okay, so here we go. We started with this, and I'll make up a little story. So these little tipped over umbrellas, they look like guys, little guys metal detecting. That's what that looked like to me. Little guys melting. But they're social distancing. <laughs> they're way far apart from each other. Um, so anyway, they're metal detecting. And they're looking for that portal. They're looking for that portal to that world. Well, they found it. There they go. <laughs> they found the portal. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it's going to take, you'll have to make a lot of them, Shell. You're not going to build this on the first try, more likely than not. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. So, yeah, so that, this is what they're looking for, okay? They're looking for that portal, and then here we go. And it's just something, because I love abandoned places, but living in a world where the, we're all abandoning everything, it's not so fun, is it? Okay, so let's see. What else? Oh, this is my other favorite in this book. Well, that one, I like this one too, but okay, this one. All right, so this is what I started with. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it lighthearted, guys. Okay, so I started with this, and when I saw this, my first thought was there's no bridge here. It's like, this is like two different buildings, but it needed a bridge, a bridge to somewhere, <laughs> Right now, it's a, there was nothing there. There's not even a bridge. But it needed a bridge to somewhere because there was a bridge to nowhere. Okay. So I built a bridge. There's where I built my bridge. I built the bridge to somewhere. <laughs> so I made this. And I don't put a lot of people in my uh, collages because I like you to be the person in the collage or in the world. But I put her in there. And you can see she has a, fe a feather. And she's like, you know, she's built the world. She built this world. Hi, Debbie. So we went from this dead world to this living world. And she built it. And we can build it back too, people. We can do it. We can build it back. All right, let's see. Um, that's the one we were working on. This is just kind of a simple one there. Let's see what else we got. I think I showed this one earlier. Okay, so I started with this. Started with this and built it into this. 
So again, from this to this. And I start by painting out the sides, which I'll show you on that other one a uh, minute ago. This is still in progress. I showed you the, oh, let me show you what this one looked like before. Okay. Here's this one. Yeah, she built a city on rock and roll. You ought to do that page, Colleen. Build you a city on rock and roll. You would do a good page with that, Colleen. And then here, I put Big Ben in there. We we rebuilt London. What can I say? We re we rebuilt London. <laughs> okay, and then this one is one of my all time favorites. Let's see, let me find it. Okay, all right. So this is what I started with. And again, you see all the white border with the text and everything. Now read the text and, you know, I, I, of course I'm covering it up and I have two copies of it. So, but it started with this, but I wanted some kind of a spirit realm going on here. So I built this. So I went from this to this. Let me tilt it a little because it's a little flashed out. There we go. So, all right. So anyway, my, uh, I like going from this to this. <laughs> I just threw a castle in there. You know, just throw a castle in there. <laughs> Let me see. Do I have anything else? Uh, that might be all I want. Oh, one more. One more. Okay. And I've done flips in these books multiple, multiple times. So, okay, this one here. Let me get my post it note back up there. Okay, this one, this ghost town. And I looked at this and I thought, what could have happened? What could have happened to this world? What could have happened to turn it into a ghost town? When worlds collide. So I did, um, you know, worlds colliding in the, in the sky. Let me tilt it because it has a glare. Okay. So went from this to this. Thank you. I love my abandoned books. You know, and I still work in them all the time. I mean, you know, in different stages. This one is finished. And this was the first one I did in this book. And, and I've told the story of this one before. When I looked at this, I thought of the Star Trek, the old 60s Star Trek. And I forget somebody, I think Devin, somebody knew the name of, I can't remember it now. The one, uh, uh, oh, City on the Edge of Forever. And this reminded me of the alley when McCoy went through the time portal and he was in an alley and he, and he, he, he went through a, like a, he got some bad, you know, drug induced thing going on. But anyway, um, he, the, the, the uh, homeless person in the alley found his, his uh, phaser and was playing with it. And anyway, he, he phasered himself and it, not Dr. McCoy, but the homeless person. And this reminded me of the alley. This reminded me of the alley. So I said, well, we're going to do something with that. So that's what I made. I built this world minus the post-it note, of course. I built this world like a portal and a prism. Here's a prism right here. And then that was that alley. In my head, I mean, and this is just in my head. I usually don't tell my version of what I'm seeing or thinking. I just show, I just do it, and then let the per, let you, the viewer, decide what it means to you. Because it could, it, obviously, it's not going to mean Dr. McCoy in City on the Edge of Forever to you, <laughs> right? Probably not. But um, so I don't usually explain or give titles to sometimes I do, but I usually don't explain my uh, vision because it's you're going to see what you want to see in the pieces. Right. So you're going to see what you want to see. So anyway, that's the abandoned places. Now, let me find that one. Let me find that. 
the that one with the red was it in this one or was it in the castle i think it was in this one yeah no here let's go back i was going to show you how to blend i'll show you how to blend a couple different things i want that red red lake i want that red lake i don't remember where it was Oh, that breeze feels so nice coming through. We had that storm come through last bad as the one we had the, the last one that came through. It woke me up, but it didn't. Where's that red page? No. Where is that page? With the Damn, I'll be in this one because it's not, I don't think it's not in the castle one, so it's gotta be in here. Hang on, let me just keep flipping until I find it. It's all red. Red Lake can't be that hard to find. I think it's more toward the back, but I got this one I'm working on here. Really? Well, come on now. I didn't think it was that far back. You know, guys, I'm not looking at chat. I'm trying to find that page with the red lake. Now I'm determined. I know it's in here. Hang on, I'm not looking at chat, guys. I'm trying to find that page. Really? It shouldn't be that hard. It shouldn't be that hard to find that red lake. Oh, my gosh. It is in this book. I'm pretty sure it's in this book. Why am I not finding the red lake? See, I thought it was close to this one. There it is. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Because I only had two books out, The Castle and The Abandoned. And I knew it wasn't in The Castle because there's no castle. All right, so what I'm going to do real quick here is I'm going to show you a couple of different blending things. Let me move. Um, Some of these little things are getting in my wet ink. Let's not let that happen. Let's pick up all these little scraps. And I'll just put these in a bag or something, you know, the little bits if I don't use them. And then you can pick through them. I don't keep a lot of this tiny little flyaway stuff because it flies away. All right, so let's start with um, that over there. I'll show you in this little book here. And uh, let me just get a flat brush here. Whoops, that's got ink in it. Don't want that. Let's see. Or wet. It's still wet, rather. That back in the water. Let's get a nice little flat something here. Okay. All right. Oh, it's so pretty and sunny. I got to go for a walk. Got to get my walk in. All right. That's okay. It's no biggie. All right. So here we go. Um, so I'm just going to kind of almost dry brush, just get enough because I want to kind of whitewash it again. We're going from like something like this to something like this. It's just getting rid of. It's like another way of reverse collage. You're getting rid of what you don't want, or at least whiting it back, whitewashing it back. You don't have to get rid of it completely. <clears throat> okay, you don't have to get rid of it completely. And this is just the base. Then I can go in here and add more things and world build on top of this, right? But this is what it starts like, like these. Okay, see, this is what they start like. <clears throat> and then you can go in here. And, and, and you just, it's very zen, it's very chill. And you just go in here and you start just kind of whiting out things that you don't want or knocking it back. You don't have to even completely get rid of it, okay? And it's very little, it's just very little paint on there. It's like dry brushing, very little paint because you want to be able to see through the layers, so if you just went in there like this, like just straight on look, see how thick that is? You don't want to do that. You're covering everything up. You don't want to do that. You want to kind of knock back all the paint off the brush and just get very little paint, very little paint on the brush. 
and then you can dry brush. And don't be afraid. See, this is one of the things. Uh, you can't be afraid to get rid of stuff. You know, don't be afraid to, you know, if you say that, oh, I don't even like that color at all, then just get rid of the whole thing. You know, you don't have to be afraid to cover things up. And this has got uh, book papers. It's got jelly printed papers. It's got little images from um, botanical books. It's got um, tape, not not uh, washi tape, but uh, masking tape on there. Masking tape kind of gives it a texture. So I'm just going to kind of, and I just, usually what I'll do, I'll when I do something like this, if there's something on TV I want to watch, and I don't have to really concentrate on the TV, I can just more listen, like, you know, Oak Island. Or something. Well, I do watch Oak Island. but And I don't do a lot of this kind of stuff at night because I don't see the colors very well at night. But uh, if you just have a little thing of paint, it doesn't even have to be this big. It can just be a little jar, of, you know, a little lid. Just take the lid or something like that and just have a little bit of white paint and just sit there with your brush and just dry brush out a page that you've already done. You know, I've always got these journals in different stages on the go. So it's like I don't ever run out of journals. Y'all see my shelves. <laughs> You've seen my shelves. You don't run out of journals around here of any size and shape. So I'm just kind of blending it all together, making it kind of cohesive. But in this case, instead of like coloring out like I do in my abandoned places with big, and I'm going to show you how I blend this out in a minute. Uh, with color in this book, this particular insert, it's all going to be, this is the theme. It's going to be, everything's going to start with whitewash. Now, will I go in there and world build on top of it? Yes. But I'm starting in this case turning them into like this, right? Okay, so any questions? At least I, I think I quit the, la my. I'm not lagging to myself anymore. Thank goodness. <laughs> Hope I'm not lagging to you guys now because I'm not lagging to myself. So I hope this is inspiring you. Are y'all getting ideas? Are you enjoying the inspiration? Again, guys, that's what I'm all about. You know, I, I try to do projects where I'm finishing them and completing them. I do try to do that as well. But for me, I want y'all to be inspired to try things. That that is the most that's more important to me than for me to for you to see me complete something every episode or every show. It's more it's more important for me to inspire you to try things. Try, you know, different size journals, try acrylic paint, ink jelly plating, you know, tearing up collage papers, try, try different things because then you'll find your own style. You, you, you know, you might try to do some space scenes like mine or the waterfall or the nebulas or the stars. You might start by doing that and you don't have to start in an abandoned book. Not everybody likes abandoned books. You might like a flower book. You might like a travel book, a coffee table book. You know, I'm talking about altering a book. Not everybody likes um, abandoned things. But, you know, I just show you my techniques so that you can get ideas to develop your own. You, you know, you might try to copy some for a while, but eventually you're going to want to do your own. Thank you, Katrina. Eventually you're going to want to do your own thing. You're not going to want to just do science fiction and space scenes just you know because that's what i do and i show you how to do it but you'll um hopefully you know figure out what you like do you like gardens do you like travel you know look at nick bantock's type stuff he does travel you know um and faux femora and i'm just kind of trying to do one page here just so you can kind of see how i'm knocking it back i might want to knock back more around this little weasel down here <clears throat> but again, this particular book is uh, is like a whitewashed book uh, journal. But you can't be afraid to cover stuff up. You think, oh my gosh, I, I, I tore those book pages and I glued them in. And unless there's a word that you want to accent or something, you'll still see stuff back in there. But and that's too heavy. 
Um, You know, you can use a baby wipe or your finger to blend and just dry brush. So again, I, I like to inspire people to try things. But, you know, if, if you're afraid, you go, oh, I can't do that. Well, have you tried? Well, no. Well, you know, well, I can't make you. I can't make you try. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm not sure. Will, Willie, Ma, Millie, Willie, Millie, Willie. <laughs> That's going to be my name for you, Millie, Willie. Okay, so you can kind of see where we're headed. And again, I could even wipe this out a little more, or I could wash down the paint even more with some water. Oh, and speaking of it, and have it even more washed down. And then that way, if I over, if I want to go over the whole weasel and, and get like. And get it knocked back, but still see it. So you can kind of do that. You can walk down even more. So that's where I'm going in this particular book. So we go from stuff like this, which I like this too, because it can go with, I could do this with black or colors. Okay. I could, I could add color or black in this, like I am in, this one's all napkins. Well, there's one collage piece in here, but this is all napkins and Posca paint designs. And I showed this at the beginning. I'm just going to flip through it again. This is the one we started last week with napkins. And all this is, if you want to make your own traveler's notebook insert, this is 110 weight cardstock cut down to eight and a quarter by eight and a half and folded in half. That's the standard size of the traveler's insert. Okay. And then what I did is I went through on every page and added a napkin or napkins, sometimes parts of napkins. And then I went back and see like this one I've painted in. I painted in the back black round. And then what I did is took my Posca and started uh, going around additional, like let's just see, see. And with the paint pen, you can go in here, go in here with your Posca paint pen or any paint pen and start, um, outlining or or doodling and I could do dots I could do stripes I could do you know like I said go to CC creation if you want to see multiple um, multiple types of patterns okay I could add some more leaves in here could add some more leaves and I could paint these in with paint too see So you can see how you can fill up a whole page with just doodling on top of your the, the napkin and paint. Okay, so then I'll just keep flipping here. This is the one that we did last Monday, and it's kind of whimsical. I don't usually do a lot of whimsy stuff, but I did this one. And the little tag says, if lost, please return to Devin or Debbie. They were the two that were talking about tagging and, and making him, you know, if lost, return. So, um, yeah, that's got a lot of color in it. And again, parts of napkins. These are all different parts of napkins. Uh, Jane Davenport ones. And then a fish one. I've got a couple different fish pages, shell pages. These are all napkins. All this, this is a whole nap. It's a napkin journal mini version from my big napkin journal. So you can see. So you could start with just napkins. There's so many ways, guys. This is the collage papers. These are the uh, deli papers that I had done some uh, stencil stencil pulls on. And these are the deli papers uh, from that. But the rest are all napkins. Napkins. And then this one, I painted the background and added the little dots with the, with the Posca paint pens or the Arteza. I don't remember which one. And so you can see it's at least started with something on every page. And then this is what the book looks like flattened out. Okay. I like the Jane Davenport. Yeah, I do too. They're fun, the nap Jane Davenport napkins. Okay, so now I showed you how to do this one. Let me clean my brush. All right. Now this one, um, I'll show you how to practice if you don't want to practice in a book. Let me get one of my magazine journals. So 
So this is three magazines. This is old. <laughs> three magazines, and this is before I learned not to go front to back because this will warp your spine. If you have magazines glued together to make a, a magazine journal, you want to work front to back, back to front, some in the middle. Otherwise, you're going to warp your spine like that, as you can see. And you can't, there's no getting it back once that happens. But these are three magazines glued together, and it's a way to practice your paint blending and paint color matching. If And, and it's a way to do it without... Um, Working in, you know, a $20 abandoned book, well, $14.99. You can get them for different prices now. But anyway, it's a way to play with color, your paints. And all this is just done, Hubster's Home, all this is just done with craft paint, with Americana craft. It doesn't have to be Americana. I just like Americana paint. But it's a way for you to practice your blending and color matching. Hi, Z. That was a fun show last night, Xander, with your mermaid. <laughs> uh, it's a way to practice this without going directly to a book. But this is what I do with all my pages. They all have, or pretty much all have, something on the side. This one you can see I covered up with some blue water uh, paper to work on. But they all have something on the sides of them. Pretty much all of them, you know, the text, the information like this. OK, so they all have something like this to the side. And what I do is I paint it out. Sometimes I'll do. And if you're unsure how to do it, start with black. Start with black and just get rid of all the white. OK, it's it just easier to do that if you don't know, if you're afraid to try to blend. OK, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get and then, then I want to read out of this book. All right. So I'm going to just get some. And I'm just kind of looking. I've just done so many of them, guys. And, you know, I don't do it perfectly every time. But, you know, let's get some red. I've got some white so I can make some kind of pinky. I need a little bit of purple. Let's see. I make sh and always shake up your paints because the, the oils will separate, especially if you've, you've had them sitting there for a while. Okay, because, see, I see some purple in there. I also see some slate blue in there. Maybe a little bit of that. And then up here, there's more blue and gray. Maybe I need a little bit of black. And then some more blues up here. Do I, can I use that? I think I could probably use that with some white. We'll, we'll try these colors. Okay. And then I either use my fingers, paintbrush, or baby wipes. So let me get a baby wipe here and uh, I'll start. Let me see. Let me zoom in one. Well, we're good. I don't want to mess up with my lighting again. <laughs> I just got me not uh, flickering on my or not lagging to myself. Do you have trouble finding baby wipes at the store? Um, yeah, I have. I was kind of stocked up, but Hubster did find me. a. He found me. A, he found a box of them somewhere when he went out and uh, he brought it back to me instead of bringing me flowers. Instead of your 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 uh, significant other bringing you flowers now, now they bring you craft supplies. <laughs> you brought me a box of baby wipes. <laughs> Bless his heart. Okay, so I'm going to start here, and uh, there's no glare that I see. All right, so I'm going to start with, like, I'm looking at this, and it looks like red, but it has just a touch of black, and I could go with brown, too. Maybe I'll just add a touch of purple in there. So what I'm doing, and I can see the colors. If you're not used to blending colors, you probably want to have a, a white palette, a white palette with no paints underneath. But I'm just so used to seeing the colors that I'm, I'm looking like right there. Like that's my focus right there. Okay. And I'm trying to match that right there. Now, digitally, you could do this in an instant. And I've been playing with my Procreate and my Adobe's and all my stuff on my um, new iPad that I got for uh, Christmas. No, did she get it for my birthday? Anyway, Denise bought it for me. I think it was for my birthday. Might have been Christmas. But anyway, um, so I've been playing with them. And it's so easy to <laughs> you just click on that color and you get the little match. You know, but this is old school. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just trying to match this, okay? And there's a little bit of tree. Now, this is very white, so I might have to put two, two, two coats, right? Because I'm 
you know, going over white. I'm, I don't gesso anything. And uh, so I'm just going to kind of blend. And, and one of the tricks to doing this, and you want to be careful not to, you know, go over the edge and, and glue your pages together, is take the color that you're using from here and pull it over into the area that you're trying to match. Because then what you're doing is you're kind of co-matching it. So you're not just, um, you're making their color match to your color too. Again, I'm, I'm, it's going to probably take two coats. And it dries real quick, guys. It dries real fast because it's acrylic paint. And it does take some practice. But I'm doing all my blending right here on my little tray. Okay. And again, I might need two coats, but. And also, when you're trying to blend in collage stuff, and I've said this a lot of times, it's much easier. I'll let that dry. It's much easier to blend torn paper than cut paper. Because if you have cut papers, and you know, I could probably uh, tilt my pages. I, I end up varnishing them. See how they're varnished? So everything becomes cohesive at the end of the day. But... Um, if I have a cut paper, let's see if I can find one here. Okay, look right here. Look right here. I'm going to hold this up, and you're going to see there's a cut paper there, and it doesn't blend as well because torn papers blend better than cut papers. All right, so that should be kind of that should be kind of uh, dry by now. Might need a little bit more red kind of going across there. Okay, so you can kind of see how we did that and of course I could always go in here too and make little see how that kind of has a little bit of a uh, reflected reflection there but I don't really want to put that reflection in yet because I got to put the blue in first and I can put this reflection that kind of matches that reflection and I could come down here I could make it go I could have my little side here come down again it's going to take two coats because it's trying to cover up some colors take two coats why uh, red yellow lime green they take two coats most of the time so yeah hubster brought me home a pack of baby wipes to use in my collage and he got the right kind too i bought it i had to buy a couple off brands at one time but uh he knows the kind of that i like so he's always on the lookout for it so he'll buy me one here or there I don't need any more right now. I've got a couple extra packs and I'm not doing collage every single day. So <laughs> Devin said, I have some stuff to do. Okay. Bye Devin. Thank you. You have a good day too. Hi, Vonnie. I just saw you there, Vonnie. And I'm going to there's Jonna, sister woman, preppy crafty girl who does, um, she has uh, vintage paper kits in her Etsy shop. Just look for the preppy crafty girl on Etsy. Um, but boogie, <laughs> yeah, I, I, have, I like my huggies natural. I don't like the huggies that have aloe or scents or anything like that. Okay. So there we go. So you can see, okay, there we, we started with that. All right. Now I'm going to come up here. I'm just going to wipe my brush out here, but I'm just going to go up here in the black first. Now I can always add more color. I can add more color. Um, like a little bit of other colors in here, or I can just kind of go this way and make it blend. So I'm going to make this section of the landscape come all the way over. And there's a little bit of trees. And again, I probably want to do the sky before I put these little individual Bob Ross trees, right? Because <laughs> then I have to paint around that. But I just want to kind of show you how I'm matching. I'm kind of carry that over into there. Don't be afraid to cover things up. If you don't like something, just cover it up. That's one of the things that you have to be brave about, in my opinion, in doing reverse collage, because you're reversing things out. You're white. You're um, getting rid of stuff. So you're you're uh, wiping things out with paint. So you're reversing it, and you can't be afraid to do that. Okay, you can't be afraid to reverse it out. All right, so now I'm going to come down here with a little bit of the blue. And I'm just going to take a little bit of the black. 
maybe just a touch of that purple. And I'm just looking at this color. My eyes going back and forth, back and forth. My eyes looking at this and that, this and this, this and this, going back and forth. So maybe I'll start with this little bit of purpley blue just to get it on there. Okay, got to let it sit, let it dry. It just takes a second to dry. But let's get it dry. Kind of dry brush across there. Okay, and then maybe I want a little bit of, um, there's a, some white, um, like foamy edge there. So I might just pick up a tiny, tiny bit of white. And put in a, you know, maybe a couple little waves. Not really waves, but like foam cap things. See? Just come across there like that. Maybe add a few more just so it looks like that's the way it should be. <laughs> see? And you can still see a little bit of line there from the white to the, that's because you might need two coats. So. Okay, something like that. See how it's working out? Bye, Melody. Sleep well. I hope you're doing well. Message us every now and me or somebody, Janet, message some of us, Melody. We like to know you're okay. If you're still here, you might have already left. Okay, so now let me go back to this ready brown color here because I need to fix that right there. Okay. Okay, I can still see a little bit right there. Maybe I'll just kind of add a little more red. See, I think part of the trick is going from the unpainted part. Don't just go right up to the line. Don't just go right up to the line of that you're trying to cover and stop. Take your paint and go over that line and carry it across. Carry it across the, the bridge of non-painted to paint it. Okay, and I could even use a little bit more red over in here. Just brighten this up a little. Okay, something like that. See? And then up in here, if I don't want that to be so black, I, maybe I want some more tree shadows in here. Let me get a little bit of the blue and maybe darken it to just a little bit of a grayer blue. And test it out. If it doesn't, you know, just paint over it. Okay, so maybe there's some little, I can see a little tree um, line, a little tree line kind of in there. See it right there? A little bit of a tree line. Well, I'm going to extend... I'm going to extend that tree line. Right across. Maybe there's another little bit one up here. If it gets too thick, then just go back over with black. Go back in there and kind of paint it down thinner. You see? See how that just extended? And this is just great way to practice. Practice your blending and color matching. And if you don't want to do it in your um, coffee table book, because you don't have to do a band in, it can be whatever kind of theme you like. Uh, then do it in a magazine. Practice in a magazine, right? <clears throat> All right. Now, my brush is getting a little crusty, dried paint. So let's go ahead and clean that out. Okay. And then when I'm gluing collage elements down, and I could do this. I just like doing this first. I like getting rid of the white. But you don't have to do that first. But then when you put matte medium on everything, um, I use golden matte medium to collage down my collage elements. Then the whole piece is going to end up being matte. The, it takes, see how the shine from the magazine? 
it's and I know it's I mean the book I know it sounds a little redundant to mat it all out and then end up with a gloss varnish but that's just the way I roll <laughs> I get everything nice and matte with the matte medium when I'm gluing everything down and it gets rid of all the shine okay let me find a page that's got it all over okay here's one Okay, see, it's all matte. Well, it's not all matte because I've got a couple of collage elements there that I put on top. But it's all matted. It's it's flat. Okay, when I say matte, I mean no shine. So when you use the golden matte medium, it takes the shine off. But then after everything is said and done, I varnish the pages. Get over here. And then it's the whole thing is cohesive with a nice shine. Plus it seals it. And then you're done. You can't really go back and do anything else to these pages. They're done because you've sealed it with a shiny varnish. Okay. And so if you want to see how I do full on pages from start to finish, go in my playlist, look for abandoned, abandoned or mixed media or collage. One of those three playlists and you'll see a page, many pages because I've got over a thousand videos. I was up to about I don't know, 1,500 or something like that, getting close to 15, I think. It was close to 1,500 videos. But when they said, not made for kids, I went back through and looked and made sure that none of my videos looked like I was trying to attract. And it's not about attracting kids so much or, you know, gearing it toward kids. It's about the advertising. It's all about the advertising. That's what that whole thing was about. It's not about making sure you don't cuss. It's not to make sure. It's nothing like that. It's about are you trying to attract kids to your videos? And then the, therefore the ads are attracted to those videos. See, it, it has to do with that. Um, so, but anyway, some of the videos could like some of the real um, simplified coloring book pages. I put them all on private. So I still have them. But they're all, they're not in the, in my queue. Okay. All right. So let's go back down here. Now I want a little bit of this purple and blue and white. I'm just looking at this color. I'm looking at this color right here now. And I'm going to kind of very little. Hey, honey, how was uh, everything? At, I'm still online. Okay. Fresh. Oh, yeah. I'll take fresh coffee. You know, I'll always take fresh. I was bragging on you about how you bought, uh, did you wash your hands yeah. before you touch the rim of my coffee cup? I'll give okay. you a fresh cup. Okay. <laughs> I know you washed your hands. We were, we're good at that. How's everything? Good. Good. Everything's good. Okay. Did you get on that call, conference call? Yeah. Okay. We well, can tell me about it later. Yeah, I got some stamps and mailed you things. For oh, thank you for mailing that stuff. Thanks, honey. How's the lady at the post office? She was fine. She said, I'm out of international stamps. I've only got this. I can give you that. That's all I got. I said, well, that's fine. Oh, okay. So I saw the last. I said, we well, probably sold them to my wife. She said, I probably did. <laughs> Sold the last of her international stamps to me. Yeah, probably. Um, so anyway, now I'm again. I'm going over here to where the color is, and I can add some of my color. So it looks like you have matched everything when, in fact, some of it is your own color. Okay, some of it's your own color blending in. But you see how it's doing. And again, it may take two coats depending on you know, what colors you're using. And again, I'll go back here into this tree line and bring those little trees down. So is this interesting to you guys? <coughs> is this interesting at all to see how you blend? You'll take a coffee too? <laughs> You need to come visit again. John has visited before. John has visited my house. So as her sister, her sister is Darcy Glam. They used to do a show together. Um, they used to do a show together before she um, went to Australia. She went to Australia to learn how to be a camera woman at Hillsong. And uh, she spent a year over there in Australia. I think she'd go back in a heartbeat if she could. But she got trained to be a camera, camera woman. So what do you call it? Just probably just got cameraman. Is that probably how? <laughs> Hi, Desert Nana, Mary Beth. So I'm I'm kind of going slow and taking my time so you can kind of see. Okay. Now we're getting down here in the red with it's kind of a little bit of red into that purple now. 
And again, it might take two coats. So I'm just kind of, I'm just looking at this and just kind of matching it up. So now it has a little bit more, a little bit more purple in there with the red. And I used to do trompe l'oeil um, murals when I was a mural muralist artist. So, you know, when you do a lot of that, where you're, you're doing the fool the eye type of painting, you, you learn a lot of, you know, coloring tricks and stuff too. But it's mostly just doing a lot of it. Cinematographer. Okay. Cinematographer. That's what she was in training to do. There's some pictures. She has some pictures of her filming while they were, while they're on, on air. She's camera. She's in the camera shot. She's doing the camera. So I'm just taking my time here, guys. You know, I'm kind of going real slow so you can kind of see the different color changes. Right. You can kind of see how it changes. And again, see where you can still kind of see the white. You might need to put a little more, you know, another coat. So it dries pretty quick. You know, you can see how quick it dries. <clears throat> yeah, camera operator. Tee hee, Julie. Hi, Julie, by the way. All right, so now it's got to kind of sit for a second. Let that kind of. All right, so now let's let's just uh, let's just start with the base down here now. I'm just going to base all this red down here, and I'll, I'll blend it in better, but I'm just going to, because it's uh, it's to the point where it's almost all red, I'm just going to start with just a base of red. Let's just get a coat down, let that dry. And then I can go back over it, right? Because it's going to take a couple coats. Then we'll go up and do the sky. But you actually enjoyed the screenwriting too. Get you a double degree. Get you a double degree cinematography and, and script writing. <laughs> you could do that, Donna. Oh my gosh, your cat is following my brush strokes. Like the little head's going like... Uh, Oh, and I got a little note here. Um, I got all my, um, I got all the, uh, what do you call it, mailed out, except Lynn J. Lynn J., if you see this, I need your address. You did not email me your address. I have Lynn D., and, and I have her address. So I guess maybe I assumed I had yours, but I don't have yours, Lynn J. I need your address to send out your um, art card. All the other art cards have gone out. The napkins went out. The, everything's been mailed out. Except Lynn J. I need your address to mail your art card. I just saw it sitting there. Um, oh, so yeah, let's go. Uh, let's get Bob Ross. Okay, so it, let's see. Is Bob Ross going? Is he looking back and forth? <laughs> My Bob Ross finger puppet. And this is an adult Bob Ross. This is not for kids. This is an adult Bob Ross <laughs> finger puppet, not geared toward children. This show is for adults. <laughs> right, Bob? All for, for adults. <laughs> okay, so now that's almost already dry. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, add just a touch of that blue to this. And then that's too much. Okay, so let's just, let's put another coat of red here. It's a, it might need three coats to cover up that white. Just depends on the color, the brand. I mean, my Americanas are really um, pigmented, but still, um, you know, to cover up white like that, red, lime green, and yellow are the hardest ones to do one coat. But you can see it's, we're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, okay, Clam. It's all out. It's all out. Po Hot, Hottie Popo's got some happy mail coming. Um, yeah, so. Oh, you got your card on Saturday. I just saw that. Oh, good. Hottie Popo. Good. I'm glad you got your card. I'm glad you like I hope you like it. And if y'all don't follow Hottie Popo, she and Jersey Crafter, and I don't know who else y'all. Uh, it seems like y'all alternate uh, streaming together. All right, so now I'm going to go in here and add a little bit of the blue and purple and knock down to kind of like some of these colors in here. Let's just see. So I'm going to kind of go in here with a little bit of the purple from up here 
and I'm, I'm going to add my own purple in here. Look, so I can add whatever color I want down here and that'll make it look more cohesive when I cut across to the white because that might be a little too much. Let's put a little more red back in there. So as I'm coming, I can cut across here and add my own colors and that will, it fools your eye and you can't tell where one starts and one ends if you just take your time, you know, and I am trying to take my time here. Okay, and cut across there. Maybe a little bit more up in here. Maybe just a little more. That's too much. Let's lighten that back up. Maybe I want a little bit of wavy action going on. So you can kind of see how I'm just kind of making it blend. I can make this as bright as I want because as long as I kind of make it look like it's coming from over here, right? So you can kind of see how that makes it look like there's, and then of course the closer you are to the front, the bigger the things are. So you're going to, if you're down here, you're going to have more, you're going to have bigger, um, I don't want to call them waves, but um, water movement, you'll have bigger water movement closer here. So I might just cut, cut right across here. Okay, so you see how it's kind of blended all together? And again, I could take a little more time. All right, now if I want to even add, oh, let me go back up here and, and do my little... Um, reflections so let me get back up here with the red and the black and make it a nice kind of rust color and do my little bob ross kind of reflective type thing going on here where these these trees are being reflected down into here right So thanks again all for the thumbs up. We got a lot of people here today. Thanks, guys. Monday's usually our busiest day. Thanks for coming back to the second because we lost sound at the beginning of the first one and had to start over. So yeah. So just a little bit of reflection. If you really want to match it, you can, you know, really pay attention to up here. Coming down here, this would be a little bit pointier, maybe right there just so that your reflections kind of match. Okay, now let's say I want more water, um, what do you call it, uh, highlights. If you want, I'm cleaning off my brush here. So now I'm going to go over here to the white and go back over here. And there's a reflect, there's a glare right there. Let me put a, let me put a paint thing under there to get that glare off. Okay, so now I'm going to get, again, real thin. And I just clean my brush in here. When it starts getting, the paint starts building up, getting real crusty, then I'll clean the brush. Otherwise, I'm just cleaning it off on a baby wipe. So I don't have to keep cleaning my brush. Because you don't want water in your brush. You don't want a bunch of water in your brush. So, you know, keep it pretty dry. Bob would be proud. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. All right, so now... See, we have this bright highlight over here. Well, maybe I want more. Maybe I want more. So I'm going to just kind of, I'm going to go in here and on the very angle. See, and that's, this is also an angle brush. So look how flat. Can you see how flat I can get that brush? You can get it very flat. An angle brush, if I could only have one kind of brush, it would be an angle brush because you get so versatile. Okay, so I got you do it is a little tricky sometimes to go across the ditch too of the book. But maybe I just want some extra highlights in the water. And then maybe some of the highlights cut into this reflection here. Just a little bit. You know, maybe the, the reflective water is a, a nice light reflection here. So it's cutting right across. Maybe over here too. Very light touch. And just adding some extra flavor. Okay. And 
Now there's a tree right here and I'm just going to kind of go right over the tree because I'm going to go in there and paint over. I'm going to paint some more branches. So I'm just going to add a little bit more reflection. That might be a little too much, you know, just wipe it back, take a baby wipe or just add a little bit cut right across. Take your baby wipe and wipe it back if it gets too much. Very, I'm trying to get very thin, very thin. And just like a hint of light, and maybe a little bit right there. Okay. Something like that. Okay, now let me hold it up so you can kind of see. So you see how we've kind of made it all blend off got rid of the white now we still have to do up here still got to do the sky okay but i could go down in here and like you know highlight some of these little little things but i'm going to collage things into it so uh, you know there's these little floating wood things in there i'm right here on this page what i'm just trying to do is show you how to blend how to blend the colors okay all right, so now let me clean my brush off. Let's go up here at the sky. Okay, let's see if this is going to be enough right, right shade of blue. <clears throat> it's a little more blue. Might take two coats. And again, I, I shouldn't have done these mountains until I got the sky, but I'm going to add a little bit extra cloudage here too. Okay, so let's just get rid of the, let's get rid of the white. Let it sit for just a second. Okay, let it just kind of dry for just a minute. Hi, Mark. How you doing? Hi, Joyce B. Uh, did I say hi to you, Artful Dabbler? Carla V. Anybody else missed? Your brush would be a dagger brush that's your favorite the dagger brush okay i think i have one of those i don't i don't really use it mark i mean uh ian it's one of those kind of weird if you're talking it let me see it might be the wrong thing i'm thinking of hang on ian i'm looking through my brushes here am i thinking of the right thing that's kind of a weird it's got like a uh, it's not this, is it? Is it this? Is it this, Ian? Is this what you're talking about? Is that a is that a dagger brush? I could be wrong. Yes. Okay. It's kind of round. It's kind of a rounded angle instead of a flat, pointy on the back end. It's rounded. Okay. So let's end. If y'all don't follow Ian, make sure you do. Okay. I'm gonna go down here with this red and just get rid of this. Some down here where, um, see where I picked up some something glue uh, from the back. So I'm just going to kind of put in a little bit something down there. The pages got slightly glued together. All right. So now let's go back up to the sky. Let's go back up here. I could probably use a little less. This um, My slate gray has got a little bit of purple tint to it. Um, And I don't really want much purple here in the sky, but let's just see how I can tone that down. And again, I'm getting rid of the white paper and the text. If you can see this, you can still see a little bit of the text under there. I'm just kind of getting rid of that. And I can go back here and fix this tree line. Okay, so once I got this kind of blended in, as you can see, and the sky, the sky is very forgiving because it can change from area to area, right? But I wanted to show you how you can blend it to match. Okay, so now I've got that kind of blended in to match. Let that sit for just a second. Then we're going to put some clouds on here. You got your art card? Oh, you got it. Oh, you're welcome, Curly. <laughs> you're just saying. You're just saying. Well, good. Okay. All right. 
Uh, you cannot because they have taken the into taken the go to page away. Oh, they are hard to find. The are you talking about the dragon brush? Ian is hard to find. I think I got mine at Michael's. Maybe Hobby Lobby. I think maybe Hobby Lobby. All right. So now I'm going to go back in here with my black and blue. A little bit of purple in there, and I just want to get that. No, that's not dark enough. I got a, still got a little bit of get some of that blue out of my brush tip there, and I just want to kind of fix my tree line here because I kind of had to paint over it. Just a little bit of tree line. Yeah, you cannot because they have taken. Oh, okay, I see that. No finding people in chat the fibs. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm not. I'm not quite following that. Ian. Okay, so now what I can do now? I'm going to get a, a fresh baby wipe. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do clouds. I cut all these little papers all over the floor. From when we did the jelly plate, jelly paper plate, oh, jelly plating with the jelly, deli papers. God, it's so hard to say. Deli, jelly plating with deli papers. You cannot, okay, let's see. All right, so let me just clean my hands up here a little bit. All right, so a couple of different things. I'm going to clean my brush out here, make sure I got most of that out. Dry brush. Okay, and you can do a couple of different things. You can just kind of tap, just get a little tiny bit. On your brush, oh, you can't see. Get a little tiny whoop, drop of water there. A little tiny bit of paint on your brush, and it can be you can go with white or off white. I mean, like a little bit of blue in there, and you can do a couple different things. You can just kind of scuff in. You can kind of scuff in some clouds like this. Very dry brush, <clears throat> and just kind of think of them floating across the sky. Don't don't do this. Don't go in here with a big load of white on there and do this. Don't do that, okay? Go in here very, because these are very far away, you know, far away. So you want them to look very far away. And you can just kind of scuff them across here. Of course, you know, you can look at pictures of clouds. You can kind of go in there with your finger and kind of knock it back a little bit. Okay. Okay, you see how I'm kind of just doing that? It's a little thick right there. There we go. I don't want it too, I want it a little thinner. So then what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll go right across into the er other areas, right? Over here where there's no paint. This is just the book itself. And you can go in here and with your finger and your brush and just kind of, it makes it look like it's attached to the painted area, right? See, it just kind of breezes right over. Then you can do a couple other things. You can also take your baby wipe. And this is usually what I do to make mist. But I'll take the paint and I'll mash it into, I'll put it on my hand so I can mash it into the baby wipe. So I'm mashing the paint into the baby wipe by doing this. Okay. And it makes it just thin. It's just a thin little coat in there. And you can do different things. You can do like nice mist. Let's, let's do a mist over here just so you can kind of see. You could have a mist coming across. You'd have a nice soft mist. Then go to a clean spot on the baby wipe and just soften it. There could be a whole little mist going right across your, your thing here. And then get some on there like this. And then you can take your baby wipe in a clean spot and kind of wipe it back some and kind of knock it back so it's not overly done. Okay. But you can also do kind of swirls. You could have some, you know, it depends on how, how uh, atmospheric you want to make it. You can do all kinds of things with that. 
Okay, I don't want too much. I just wanted to show you how to do it. Okay, so you could have a little bit of mist creeping across. Just a little bit like that. And again, it is a little tricky to get in the ditch of the book. Do that. Same thing with your clouds. You could also use a baby wipe to do, you know, bigger clouds or fluffier ones. If you want fluffier ones, you can kind of do that with a baby wipe. And go, oh, I can't see that. So that they're kind of like way back, kind of atmospheric kind. Like just a little edge to them like that. And it does take some practice and some doing. But you can't be afraid. You can't do it and be afraid. Okay. <clears throat> Just way back in there. All right. Let's see. Um, all right. Is everything okay in the chat? I mean, is, are people having issues with the chat? Hi, our wild, our, our wild Heidi. <laughs> All right. So, so you can see how we blended in. The whole edge was white, right? This whole side had a two-inch white edge. All right. Now what I might want to do is get a, like a liner brush. Let's get a thinner liner brush. Let's see. Digging, digging in the brushes. Digging in the brushes. Let's see. Is that going to be? It's a little thick. It might be a little thick. I have a lot. I have some thinner liner brushes. I'm just not seeing them right now. Let me look. Looking, looking for some. Oh, here we go. Let's get a liner brush. Let's get it wet. And then let's get it dry. Okay, so this nice liner brush. Okay. All right, so now let's say I want, let me mix some up here. Let's mix up some of this kind of brown, kind of, let's get some purple, some red, and a little tiny bit of black. A little bit more purple, a little more red. Just making a kind of a brown, that sort of that, a little bit darker than that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pick that up in my hand, and I'm going to, okay. A little bit of water on the tip, <clears throat> and I want to. And this may be too just too. I might have matched it too well, but I'm going to make these tree limbs that are on this tree right here, and I'm going to add a white, uh, you know, a highlight to them. But I got to get the brown base in there first. So I'm going to maybe just a touch darker. And I'm going to extend these tree, this tree. I could go all the way up to this off the sky if I wanted to. Okay. So I'm just making some branches. They're hard to see right now until I add some highlight. I'm just making these branches come all different ways. And then I might go down in here as well. Now they're a little wavy because they're ripply. They're ripply because they're in the water. So they have a little bit of ripple to them. Okay. And I could just keep going with that. All right. So now I'm going to get a little bit of just get a tiny bit of purple and white here. Could even just take a little bit of white probably to this. And I'm going to add just the tiniest little thin little highlight to these. Thank you, honey. Everybody said hi to you earlier. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Mark and uh, Ian are here. So, so there's some gentlemen here. Good. Can I come in and hang out for a minute? Sure. So this was all white right here. Uh -huh. 
this edge would have a two inch white border and we painted all this in to make it look like it. Wow. Good job. Yeah. Look, Bob Ross likes it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know your, your uh, YouTubers can't see this in person, but when you see it in person, ladies and gentlemen, she does such a wonderful job. Oh, thanks, honey. Yeah, really good. What the? <laughs> I got to get that nice tip on this liner. All right. Well, I'll leave you. Okay, I'm almost done. What time is it? I'll, uh, yeah, I'll be done by 12. So. Uh -oh. about, uh, he said bye to you guys. Got about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. I want to read out of the book here in a second, guys. So I hope this was helpful to you. I hope it was helpful to get some ideas and some inspiration. And again, I'm just adding a tiny bit of white to this purple to add a little, the thinnest little highlights on here. And you may not be able to see it till I hold it up, but. And I haven't even added any collage. So, you know, and you can add some collage, a lot of collage. You can add as much collage as you want. <laughs> Um, okay, so we could put a bird on it. <laughs> let's look at it. Let's do that real quick. Let's just look. Let's just look. Um, I'm gonna get, throw these baby wipes away, and if I need one, get a get a fresh one. Um, let me take a sip of my nice hot coffee here. <sighs> Good coffee. And don't forget, guys, if you have leftover paints like this, if you have a desk journal or some kind of place where you can just scrape that paint into that journal so you don't waste it, okay? What did I say I was going to do? Oh, let me get it clean my hand. What did I say I was going to do before I said I was going to read out of the book? <laughs> I was going to do something else and I got distracted by the coffee. Oh my gosh, I was going to do something else. Oh, oh, the sticker book, the sticker book. Okay, so let's see if we can just look through the sticker book real quick. <laughs> and let's just see if we can just find, just to, just to be doing it, right? Just to have something going on. Where am I picking up all that red paint? This is all dry. What am I getting? Did I drag? I must have drugged the uh, baby wipe through the through the paint thing right there. Right, let me get some of this off. Hang on. All right. Get some of that off. Okay. All right. All right, let's look at the sticker book. Maybe find a bird or something to put in the tree right there. Then I'd have to paint it, though, because I'd have to have the reflection. <laughs> we'll see. Let's just look through here. There's an owl. It's all kinds of flowers. You can put the flowers, like, real, like, in the foreground. Beetles, bugs. You can see I've used quite a bit of this book oh that would be cool hands reaching up would that creep you guys out i might do that though i'm gonna pull this sticker and just kind of keep it for a minute <laughs> Maybe there's a ladybug on the branch. Or a flower. Can do so many things. But I was thinking, I'd, and I'd have to trim around it. I'd have to cut around it. But I was thinking that this hand coming up out of the water. Now, it looks bad because of the white edge. You could either, again, paint that out or trim it off. Let me trim it off just so I don't have time to paint it in. Oh, 
always move what you're cutting, not your scissors. Hang on, guys. I'm not looking at chat. quickly cut this out again if I was still working on the edges with all my colors blended and mixed I would just I would just paint this in but um, it's going to go on top so there won't be a, by cutting off this white edge you won't have a line around it because remember if you don't have a torn edge a cut edge like this cut edge is really going to show up is really going to show up in a collage. You really want to tear your edges if at all possible. And I don't trust the glue on stickers, but because I'm going to end up with uh, matte medium on here later, I won't worry about it now. I'll just use the sticker glue. But don't trust sticker glue. Just want to kind of show something here. All right, so let's just say there's... Hands are coming up. Oh, there's a little bit of, hang on. Got a little tiny smidgen of, I missed. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll take my brush here. I know it's a little creepy, but I like it. <laughs> and I'll I'll, make, I'll add one little thing to take the creep edge off. Hang on. I'll show you. I'll add one thing. I'll tell you how it takes the creep edge off. Okay, so we've got this hands coming up, reaching up out of the tree. Now here, this will make it less, <laughs> a little less creepy by... Let's see what color do I want. Oh. Let's get uh, no. Well, I'm looking for nice forest kind of green color. Maybe olive green. Yeah. So I just want one little dro drop. I could probably find a sticker. I'm looking for, I'm going to do a little leaf. I could have just got a sticker probably out of here, but I'm going to take a little teeny bit of green. And let's see, where do I want it? I really need yellow, not white. Let's test it a little bit. Come on, there we go. <clears throat> and add one little leaf reaching reaching for life. Let that dry for just a second. Maybe just one little oops, I picked up uh, drug, drug it through the black. Let's not do that. Okay, it's a little too much yellow still. Let's just knock that back. There we go. What do y'all think? How's that look? Okay, and I mean, you could add another little kind of a, a wash over the sticker if you wanted. I just kind of have it kind of fadey like it's just, you know. I mean, hey, I didn't put a hand creeping out on there. I could have had a hand grabbing that, grabbing that log. <laughs> we didn't do that. Okay, so anyway, guys, I'm going to read out of our book. And I should probably do a reflection of the hands too, but I'm just going to.
All right, let me clean my brush. All right, so we started with deli paper. Let me get one here. We started with, well, let me pick them up off the floor. I'll show you the ones on the floor. We started showing how to do deli papers. Again, nothing nothing uh, fancy. Just getting paint on deli paper from a jelly plate. Nothing fancy. So we started just by getting paint on the pieces of paper, right? All different colors, all different co color combinations. And I tried to use up some of my metallics because I've, I've, they've been sitting there. I'm not using them. So we did that. Then from there, we added um, getting inspiration from CC Creations with just some black ink, black waterproof ink. You really want to do this like acrylic paint and, and waterproof ink because when you go to make matte medium on top of these pieces, this is going to smear if it's not waterproof. And so and then we tore up different bits. Well, first we painted on some inks different ink um, things here. Let's see. Here's another one. And then we tore them up into little pieces to use. Okay, we tore them up like this. So that's why I didn't do stenciling or anything because let me get them all here. We tore a bunch up. Uh, because they're going to be um, torn up. And you can't really see much of any kind of design anyway. You can't really see much design anyway. But when you tear them up and then use these little strips or squares or whatever in your piece, right? Okay. You can use it in whatever way you want. And I showed a few different samples of ways to use it. And then, um, and then, I, I showed a couple already. I won't go back. But you can, you can, there's lots of different ways you can use these. And, and you know, depending on the colors, if you want to coordinate your colors or, or whatever. And then when you go to matte medium in them, let's take that little edge off. You can uh, just look, look, just look at that. You know, I mean, there's just lots of things you can do. All right. So there we go. Then we, um, I showed how to paint. This was a two inch white edge here. This was just a white edge, and we blended in all the scenery so that it filled the whole page. And then you can collage or whatever you want, you know, themes or, you know, you can do, um, you know, these are all in, in different stages. That one's done. This one's done. This one's, you know, I've got kind of got the idea for that. But look, I just got them tapped down with a glue stick until I get back here. Here's where this is some uh, collage paper here. Then I showed how we just painted in a little fissure right there and stars. I think of Yuru, if anybody played Yuru or Mist. Um, so anyway, these are just some of the different pages that I've done. And they're like, again, look, this is not glued down yet. And if you want to see more of these, just go look in my playlist. Go look in my um, altered book, mixed media, or collage playlist. And you'll see tons of this in there. Here's one finished in varnish. So to take a minute and finish up the day, I'm going to read another page out of our 1001 Ways to Be Creative, a little book of everyday inspiration, Barbara Ann Kipfer. And um, so we're trying to read a page a week out of here. All right. So here's um, night number 95 to 98. And then a little inspiration of reflecting on your creative history. Oh, thanks, guys, for being. Thanks for all the thumbs up, guys. And leave comments. I know we don't get a lot of comments on the actual video itself because everybody comments here, right? Except for our lurkers. If you're a lurker, go leave me a comment. <laughs> okay, so number 95, design a skateboard. And again, it doesn't even necessarily have to be an actual, that you're going to actually make a skateboard. But go design one. 
you'll just, you know, and adapt these ideas to whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be exactly, you know, it's just, it's put this in your society of idea, put this in your society of idea collector notebook. Number 96, expand beyond the solutions you have used in the past. 97, make a file of all your favorite quotes, passages from books and movie lines. And you could also include song lyrics in that. They may provide inspiration for a creative project. 98, give yourself the free time you need to explore. So now we've read up to 98, and then there's a little uh, inspiration insert before it goes back into the numbers, <clears throat> which I always want to move my little post-it into the next week. Reflect on your creative history. Write a history or timeline of your creative accomplishments. Note the five projects that stand out. What are the shared features of the five projects you chose? What was the preparation stage? How did you solve any problems or jump any hurdles? Did you have a creative aha moment? In the end, how did you feel about what you created? Could you tweak your idea to make it better? For the projects that you considered a success, what did you do with the finished work? For the projects that you considered a failure, what did you do with them? What would you like to do now? So there's your reflect on your creative history and uh, write those down. You, if you're here, you should have a Society of Idea Collector notebook, which can be a comp book, a three ring binder, a traveler's insert, some place where you're writing down your ideas. Okay, some place where you're writing down your ideas. Most of the time, my initial write downs are on post it notes. I can't tell you how many books I have that just have the posts the post of my Society of Idea Collector that have notes just stuck in different pages waiting for more expansion. So even if you just use a post-it note and stick it in a composition book, do it, do it. <laughs> So anyway, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed the day. I hope y'all had fun. Don't forget Janet comes on at one in about an hour. Follow Janet. She's in here. I think she's still in the chat. Follow Janet and uh, um, she and Eileen battle it out. The battle of the who will win, what project gets done <laughs> at one o'clock. Thanks, guys, for being here. Uh, everybody stay healthy, stay safe, and stay free. Bye, guys.